Here's five essential basic tactics for every Total War player to know, so if you're new to the game and you're struggling with battles, employ these five tactics to annihilate your foes, starting with the most basic of them all. So flanking is one that you want to be looking to do pretty much all the time, taking every opportunity. It's not always going to be easy, there might be units in your way, but once you've gone through them, or if you can go around them and outmaneuver them, this can set you up for some absolutely huge plays of getting round behind the enemy units and doing all sorts of damage, leadership penalties, ruining of the enemy formation, all sorts of trouble you can cause the enemy with a good bit of flanking. Especially with good old hammer and anvil, like so, a classic tactic in itself, but I've got a dedicated video for that, I'll put it at the end. But I point out this tactic especially because I've seen some of the newbiest of the noob noob players who are really new to the game that do this. They have loads of infantry, they get the front line going in and then they have more infantry and then they just pile it into the back of the front line creating this one big thick line missing out on all the flanking opportunities. There are some times where you might want to do this though if you really want to hold a certain part of your line or if you're holding a choke point or a siege door or something then maybe you do want to pile a few units into the back of each other. But for the most part we want to be looking to flank. So when the frontline units come and engage if they don't seem like they need any help and you're not worried about them breaking bring the rest of your units around the flanks or look for holes in the front line. Any gap you can use to flank the enemy is a good one. And while you can flank if you do have an abundance of infantry, of course flanking is better done by the faster units of the army, typically cavalry, maybe monsters, flying units. These can obviously get round those flanks a lot quicker, giving the enemy less time to react and set up a defense, and generally have the advantage of mobility over, say, slower infantry units trying to do the same thing. Although some faster infantries like witch elves or demonettes can be pretty good for this too. And skirmish cav are also great for this kind of flanking as well, being able to shoot things in the back, especially if they've got shields. You'll completely avoid the shields if you shoot things in the back, so much better for skirmish units to be trying to hit things from behind. So keep an eye out for flanking opportunities at every single moment of a battle. Forcing an enemy unit to fight on both sides is going to mean that it takes damage quicker, which is going to give it leadership penalties quicker, which means you'll probably route it quicker. Good flanking will definitely give you an edge in any battle. Also giving you the edge is the sponsor of today's video, Acer, with the Nitro 5 AMD laptop. This bad boy has a Ryzen 7 6000 series processor with an RTX 3070 Ti, all under a sleek and tidy design. The keyboard is backlit 4-zone RGB with customization through the NitroSense key on the keyboard itself. It feels very nice and looks very nice with the white edge binding, I am a fan of that. You've also got highlighting on the WASD and arrow keys to help them stand out. As for the screen itself, it's a 15.6 inch display, QHD 1440p, 165Hz, so it's keeping up with modern monitors, but how does it handle games? That's the real question, right? Well, Total War Warhammer 3 here, of course. We're handling this no problem on a mixture of medium to high settings, getting over 60 FPS. This is on 1440p, of course, which is a bit more demanding on the old GPU. Same thing with Darktide here, another fairly demanding game. We're able to run this pretty well, over 60 FPS. Nice. It's also got dual fan cooling and quad exhaust, so you don't have to worry about your games crashing from overheating, which is always a bonus. So if you're in the market for a gaming laptop, do check out the Acer Nitro 5. If you're interested, there's a link in the description below. Thanks to Acer, powered by AMD, for sponsoring this video. Our next tactic is focus firing. So you know how generally your missile units will just fire at whatever comes into range first if you don't give them an order? Well this is somewhat fine if you're shooting units that have some kind of worth and don't have a silver shield so that you're wasting half of your ammo. But the real power of ranged units is when they unite to all fire at a single specific target. Like here I've got four missile units firing at the Butchers of Kalkengard, a very powerful monstrous infantry unit. One we definitely want to take off the field as quickly as possible, hence the focus firing. And switching to the Gorgon here, once we've got them mostly beaten down, taking down another very powerful, dangerous unit of the enemies. And it's really as simple as that with focus firing. There's no fanciness about it, just look for the most dangerous, valuable, preferably a large target because they're easier to hit with missiles, and gun it down as quickly as possible. If you're unsure how to tell which unit is worth gunning down or not, well, you can simply look at what tier they are. On the unit card, you'll see the little bronze one that tells you it's a tier one unit. It's kind of a crappy unit, probably not worth shooting or focus firing. And then you have tier two units, many of which will be worth focus firing. So keep an eye out for that little silver symbol. 
But of course, the golden tier 3 symbol is the one you really want to look for. Any unit that's tier 3 is most likely worth shooting at and blasting to pieces as quickly as possible with focus firing. So prioritize those first, as I'm doing here with the Stegodon, two units of Thunderers and some cannons blasting down this Stegodon, getting rid of it as quickly as possible. So if you've got missile and artillery units, make sure they work together to take down targets quickly. Better to take down one strong enemy unit very quickly rather than three very slowly. Next, in a bid to stop the enemy doing this to us, this honestly might be the most important tactic of the bunch, because ammo and ranged units are very powerful in Total War Warhammer, and if we can stop the enemy using their ammo, we can render those units pretty much useless. Ideally, if we can disrupt the enemy missiles before the main bulk of our army gets in range of them, we can save ourselves a lot of damage potentially. All sorts of units can be good for disrupting missiles, and anything can do it really, as long as you stop a missile unit from firing, job done. Things like chariots and cavalry and faster units are obviously great for this, but generally the idea is just to stop things firing, even if that only means running at them to push them back and make them skirmish. In some cases you might have the units just to outright kill them, like here with all this cavalry, but sometimes, like with Grom, I'm just knocking things around waiting and buying time for some better unit to come along that'll kill them faster than Grom will. So whatever it takes, if you can stop missile units from being able to use their ammo under any circumstances, you can render large portions of armies absolutely useless. Let's say you're facing an army that is 50% missiles. If you can disrupt all those missiles and not let them use any ammo, you basically take away half of their army. And you could do that with maybe just a quarter of your army. And this of course ties into the flanking tactic, but depending on what army you're facing and what their army composition is, maybe you want to focus on trying to get after the missiles, maybe you want to go for the hammer and anvil on the enemy front line. But generally, as a rule of thumb, I'd say get the missile and artillery units first before anything else. Otherwise, you're just going to be shot by them while you try to attack other melee units. So be sure to try to disrupt missile units as much as possible. Stop them from firing. It's one of the most powerful things you can do in any battle, especially if an army relies specifically on their missile and ranged units. Next to one, I definitely think the new players maybe don't think about so much. So terrain is something that can be very powerful to utilize in many ways, like here I'm utilizing a bit of the scenery to protect one of my flanks. There's no way the enemy can get me from around here, there's a rock face in the way, there's a bit of a river coming through. So the enemy's got to come all the way around if they want to try to flank me, but because I only have to worry about one side, I can put more stuff over there to protect it. We're also sat on a hill using the high ground, forcing the enemy to fight uphill. So remember what Obi-Wan told you, always try to get the high ground because forcing the enemy to fight uphill, they're actually at a damage disadvantage. You do more damage if you're elevated above the enemy. Your missiles also do more damage if you're elevated above what you're shooting at. Your cavalry will run downhill a little bit faster and do a little tiny bit more damage than they would if you were running at them on flat ground. But what about if the enemy has the high ground and the ranged advantage and you have to push on them? Well, there's ways we can take that away from them. Even if it might take a while, we can also run up the hill at a different part where they're not so we can get on the same kind of ground as them and then move over to take them on. So we can kind of take away some of their elevation advantages. So try to always be aware of elevation. Who is elevated above who? Do you have the advantages or the disadvantages? Be aware of it because it is quite impactful. Shallow water is another thing you can take advantage of. Infantry will be slowed and have reduced melee attack whilst running through or fighting in water. So slowing them, that gives us more time to shoot them if we've got missiles or can just buy us more time. And it's the same thing with forests except for large units. In forests, large units like cavalry and monsters will be slowed down by about 20% and have reduced melee attack. So if you can force infantry to fight in water or monsters to fight in the forest, they will have a disadvantage. Vanguard deployment is another thing you can use in conjunction with terrain to make some plays. Of course you can hide in trees and things like that, but did you know that even line of sight will keep you hidden? Like here, the enemy army cannot see my little units here at all because of the brow of the hill. They are simply hidden, so I know roughly where I can stand as long as I'm out of line of sight, I'm good. And then there's the classic of making use of choke points to just funnel the enemies into where you want them and to create kind of a holding ground for yourself. Especially useful if the enemy is rushing you with a lot of melee units and you've got a lot of missile units. There's also a good chance you'll do this to the enemy, forcing them into a big blob. And what do we do with big blobs? Well, we generally blow them up in some form. So just know that there's lots of things you can do with terrain. So when you're in the deployment phase of a battle, have a look around the terrain and see if there's anything you think maybe you can take advantage of. Because why not take every little advantage you can in any battle? And finally then, kill the Lord. Cut the head off of the snake, if you will. 
Taking out the leader of an enemy army is one of the most devastating things you can do to them. Luckily in Total War Warhammer, AI very often likes to feed its lords to you, so if they do, take advantage of them, pounce on them with a lot of damage dealing stuff that you can, try to get rid of them as quickly as possible. It'll make it much easier to break the enemy army. So just keep an eye on the enemy lord if they put themselves in a stupid position. If they have, go after it. You can use melee units to do that. You can use missile units to blast them down, especially if they're a large lord. Like I say, the AI isn't fantastic at protecting its lords. Very often it'll charge them into bad situations or leave them way back unprotected. They might be a squishy wizard, so they'll be easy to take out. Or maybe you just have a lord or hero that's very good at killing other characters, like old Deathmaster Snitch here. But yeah, again, nothing fancy about this tactic. Just keep an eye out for the enemy lord. Don't go too hard. Don't risk your own lord's life to try and take out the enemy lord, right? You don't want to sacrifice yours to take out theirs. That's just silly. But if you can kill the enemy lord or make them flee, it will give the rest of the army a big leadership penalty. That can very often push them over the edge into a loss and into that mass routing. Try to keep an eye on the enemy lord as often as possible for those murdering opportunities. But there we go. Five simple tactics for Total War noobs. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all the patrons who support this channel. Here's that video about Hammer and Anvil and a bunch of other tactics as well.